tonight's tactical enhancement is an Adelaide Hills Sauvignon Blanc. Tonight we're playing Warhammer, the old world, 1500 pints. And I'm taking uh, my woodies for their first outing under these rules against Doug and his beastman. Doug, talk us through what you got. Okay, 1500 points. We have a Jabba Slive, a Cockatrice, which I'm very keen to use. The general is here, Shaz back the whip. He's a beast lord. Uh, it's the old Kazrak model. That is just his trusty hound, um, which is going to be with the other Chaos Hounds. So oh, there's yeah, six yeah. Chaos yeah, Hounds, those. including him. And a few of them um, running around the... Oh, chasing yeah. car wheels, apparently. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Battle Standard Bearer, which is the old school Beast Lord model. He's got his Battle uh, right. yep. Standard on the back. This uh, level two Ray Shaman using elementalism uh, oh, on yeah. a tusk or chariot. Oh, that'll make him hard to kill. And then there's a Razor chariot a unit of, I've just put them all here, but I think there's five gore which are ambushing, maybe six. That's a unit of, I think, 26 or 27. I'll have to double check gore. Both have additional hand weapons. Um, the Chaos Hounds are vanguarding. There's a Razor Gore chariot, and then there's 10 ungore skirmishes. Oh, Who are oh, skirmishes, are they? Yeah, they, I think they come with that by default. They. They're just, yeah, they're not ambushing, they're just going to do They're short bows as well. All oh, right. Yeah. Oh, sorry, and one more uh, and one, a normal one more tusk or chariot. Very easy in the mix there. Yep. All right. right, and facing off against that fun and games, we have 22 Eternal Guard. I left space for a couple of characters. Uh, two units of six of the uh, Branch Wraiths. Not quite based correctly, but they'll do. Uh, tree Man or Person back there. Uh, three of the Warhawk Riders, and I better check the rules because I've kind of forgotten them. Two units of archers, box standard glade guard, no command with these chaps. Um, poison arrows though. Uh, glade captain, branch wraith, who's also a level 2 battle mage. And a uh, captain with standard bearer. Um, small, this army. Small and fragile. I have to be cunning or try to be and glass of wine or two will help with that. Um, and let's see, I've given um, annoyance of netlings to uh, my glade captain, meteoric iron to my battle standard bearer, so he's got a 5 plus fixed armor save. And they've both got sword of might. And branch wraith has just got a bad attitude. And um, Is a branch wraith a wizard as well? They are, they used to be fixed at level 1, now they can be level 2 for a couple extra yeah. points. Okay. Uh, not too bad in a fight, not brilliant, but yeah. you know, it's not very often you find a mage you want to stick in a fight, but this one will have a go. Yeah. All right, uh, and on that note, we will deploy and we'll check in after that. Right, we are deployed. The beastmen are on the hill mainly, a bunch of chariots over there with some horrific thing that does stuff I don't understand with them. I don't even know what it's called. A uh, big block of infantry with a, uh, a general in there. Yeah, and Battlestar. General Battlestar, so that's a Death Star. Um, your magic user is on one of those chariots. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the Cockatrice. We'll find out what that does in a minute. A uh, little bunch of dogs, a little bunch of uh, scrappy chaps over here, presumably going to move into this tower and shoot at me. And then we've got some ambushes that will turn up somewhere. Mm. They're skirmish, don't they? Uh, it's up to me. Either oh, right, right. No worries. And against that, I've got um, dryads on either flank, just to run interference and maybe do something nasty. Um, and archers in the trees on either flank. Put the treeman and my Death Star with my uh, general and um, standard bearer in the middle there. Uh, not the most flexible option, but um, I didn't want to be boxed into a corner, so we'll see how that goes. And I've got a bunch of uh, flying assassins over there looking for something to jump on. And that's it. So, uh, I don't even know who finished deploying first, so we'll just roll the dice each. Oh, I think, do I need to do my vanguard now? Oh yeah, do your vanguard, yeah. Alrighty, let's roll the dice for turn one. I'm, I'm glad that this is officially part of the army though now, which is cool. 
four, four. Oh, let's do it again. Two. Yeah, that's a bit more full. Oh, oh bugger, they get to go first. That's awesome because it's a right. shooting army. Yeah. So that's well, a huge advantage. We will check in after a Beastman turn one. All right, well, the um, Beastman got turn one and they're coming right at us. Look at that, barreling on in. Even the mage moved to the double so that it, uh, you can't cast any spells this turn. And there's no shooting, but they are rather close. Look at that, they're, they're right there. So I'd better do something useful in uh, my Wood Elf turn one. All right, that was the end of turn one Wood Elves. Uh, we moved up these chaps and they got some shots off at the uh, the magic user there brought my branch wraiths around if he's lucky if he's crazy enough to charge them then they can have some fun uh, as it is he's probably going to try and barrel these guys into the woods which could also be entertaining we move these branch wraiths out here and then i had a target rich environment and i decided the best thing to do would be to chuck all my arrows into the cockatrice because that thing is scary and it's very close um, we almost misinterpreted the rules but but I threw in some extra shots against him. Basically all uh, 20 of the uh, poison arrows and uh, also my characters here threw some shots in and we knocked three out of four wounds off of it. So that was concentrated fire, wasn't too bad. Um, otherwise, that's about it. Oh, and I, um, I put Curse of Arrow Attraction on it so you re-roll ones and I actually got a wound out of that. So uh, that's it. That's it for the turn. Uh, next turn, all hell's going to break loose. So we'll check in at the end of uh, Beastman turn two. End of Beastman turn two, I think that was. And it's yes. been a turn of mixed fortunes. Um, this thing tried to charge my archers. They fled and they got away as a result. Although its dice rolls weren't quite enough to have hit him in the first place, so staying and shooting would have been a better outcome, but it's not a chance I was prepared to take. And we fled and we got lucky and didn't quite go all the way to the edge of the board. We've got like three inches to spare there. Uh, so these guys moved up and moved around ready to pincer these guys. They're assuming I'm going to charge out to try and get these guys and then hit me in the flank with chariots. Um, over here. Uh, this chariot with the mage crashed into my dryads, which I wasn't expecting, but he did it. Smashed him. They fell back six. He followed up five. Clipped the river, but didn't take any damage. But because my dryads are stubborn, which is great, I have to say, um, they haven't run away. Otherwise, they would have been often never seen again. Um, so these guys had better rally next turn. Um... Uh, over here, I did have a branch race in there, and he had a cockatrice, which had one wound left after I'd uh, shot it up in a previous turn. Uh, he decided to direct all of the attacks on my branch wraith, which she, she feels very upset about, but who cares, she's dead. And in reply, um, one of my branch wraiths got an attack through and um, killed it. One remaining, yeah. yeah, I didn't even have any minus to his uh, armor. Uh, and we killed a dog. So we took two for two. There's a flat out tie. There's no modifiers or anything. And we just got some dryads fighting some puppies. Seems very cool to me. And maybe they're just sick of getting pissed on. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Um, oh, there was a bit of magic. What did the magic do? Oh, nothing. I couldn't oh, nothing, nothing worked. He didn't cast. All right. Uh, so that's it for turn two for the beastmen. Uh, it's getting late. We better move into turn two for the woodies. And we'll check in after that. Right, so this, I think this is only turn two for I the think, uh, do you have to take a test, wood elves. I've got a no, test I've got to take in a moment. Uh, over here, we um, gave the dogs a bad time. Uh, this lot shot at those guys on the hill there and killed a few. They passed the panic test. Over here, my chaps rallied and they shot up this guy. Uh, this unit says so one left out of five. They also passed their uh, panic test. Now, that's where things got interesting. I flew the birdies into here, and you can see from the absence that uh, this bastard did his spell in combat, roared up a storm, uh, plus five to his attacks and strength, and wiped out the unit with a whole flying fuckload of Yahtzee and whatnot. Now, my birds got to attack first, but they only took one wound off this thing. It was pretty bad dice rolling there. Um, 
Interestingly, if he'd rolled anything less, I'd have the birds left here, and he just got the wounds on him to kill him. Um, and I rolled dismally, so it didn't have to go that way, but that was a rather effective <laughs> surprise. What, what a debut for, for the Shaman of Zinch. That's the mantle of Gorok. And had I rolled a six, it wouldn't have done anything. I would have just hurt myself. But getting a five is was the best. Yeah, the but but even, even getting like a, a couple less attacks yeah. would have uh, had me still in the fight with the birdies. Mm. As it is, I've got to do a uh, morale test for those drives and it's not looking good. I'll, I'll sort that out in a second. Yeah. The other thing that happened was I, I moved, I very cleverly moved up my uh, spear so they weren't charging this turn, which forces him to charge, which means I get to use my, all of my extra ranks when he charges. Uh, but he wouldn't get any bonuses because uh, he would only be an inch away. On the flip side, my treeman had to take out a chariot that was positioned here because it would have hit these guys in the flank and that would have been bad. Uh, and then I overran thinking to put the treeman between these other chariots and my chaps. And well, that's all turned to shit now because he went and crashed into these guys instead. So my cunning plan has been foiled by one... Uh, Overzealous tree man. Overzealous tree man. He rolled one inch more than I needed him to. Just yeah. mention as well that tree man's got that special attack. Minus oh, the tree whack. The tree whack. Yeah, the tree, yeah, whack. tree whack was entertaining. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it did anything, but it was great. But we we pummeled and stomped all over the the chariot anyway, so that's gone. Is that his de old world debut? Uh, this whole wood elf army. This, this yeah, is the uh, old yeah. world debut. Um, it's interesting to see what's working and what's not because it's more like. I've had some trouble in some games with just not knowing the rules or how things are going to behave, and I thought I'd have that problem with Sami, but so far it's doing what it's supposed to. Uh, notwithstanding Doug doing some clever things that are ruining my day on, on one flank. Um, but that's worth mentioning over there, that you got you rallied and popped off. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. I, I took out the ambushes by rallying. I've had a bit of bit of luck, to be honest with you. I mean, I might gripe about that and about what the treatment has gone and done to himself, but truth be told, there are some things that have worked out properly as well anyway on that note i think uh, we'll try and get in turn three before it's pumpkin o'clock and we'll check in after that right it's the end of uh beastman turn three and i've been finding out just how fucking horrific these things are in combat uh, we killed off the last of the dogs which is not much uh these guys run around and uh try to shoot, try to shoot these guys and didn't um this thing charged at these guys and I very fortunately ran away um, over here uh, the, the fight it's okay. this chariot charged around the back of the treeman and got into this unit hit him in the flank did a staggering amount of damage nine wounds off of these guys and they have they have, uh, have light armor and shields and they're, they're, you're elite, and they're probably, what, 15 yeah, points each? Nine yeah. by 15, and, that's um, a lot of points, got smashed. It's, it's, yeah, it was nasty. Four impact um, hits plus and two my, my captain didn't do a damn thing, um, and I didn't get any hits back with anyone else. So we f they're stubborn, though, so they did their full back. Then this thing followed up and barreled right on into them again. Uh, and because I moved over three, um, it's going to get its um, impact hits again. That's pretty rough, although I might managed to kill it with um, a couple of captains and uh, some yeah, rank bonuses and things. Um, well, maybe not rank bonuses after it's done a lot of damage, but I've got a few spears that can get in still because it's the second rank will be able to fight. Uh, this monster knocked a wound off the treeman, and then this unit managed to roll up level one and got a whole lot of frenzy and bullshit. Oh, it didn't, didn't make a difference, really. I, I got thoroughly fucking diced this turn anyway. So I lost three wounds off the treeman, but he's also stubborn, so he fell back a bit. These guys failed to test restrain, so they, they moved up where they could and stopped. Yeah. And this thing chased after the treeman. In terms of getting dice, I would note that with my beast slot, I had six attacks and only hit with one, despite the primal fury. So. Well, we're finding the exception to the rule yeah. there, because you're just <laughs> smashing me all over the joint. <laughs> uh, on the flip side, these guys rallied. So look, if we did manage to play out the turn, I'd probably knock a wound or two off of that chariot, if anything. Um, and uh, this fight is poor. It's tough. Mm. He only did one wound last time, so I may... It may last another round or two. I don't think I like what's happening no, here. You're, too, you're getting thinned out. Yes, and that chariot's still got what three or four wounds yeah. on it. And he's still got a full 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 health. Four wounds, yeah. So uh, that's that's a challenge. Um, 
So if we do kill it, then we're probably going to get charged by these and guys. That's, that's they're out of position, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, look, the uh, the dryers will just run around, ready to do something next turn. But the the archers will polish off these guys, or at least form for some of the panic test. But I think the bottom line is um, my cunning plan failed primarily because the treeman just got carried away. Mm. But the other drama I've got is that um, this beastman army is absolutely horrific in the melee and I didn't realize how bad some of it was. Um, so what we did have some successes, we had some surprises. I got dice in a couple of places, but I had some good dice rolls elsewhere. But I think the bottom line is um, some weird shit happened and the beastman turned out to be significantly more dangerous in a couple of ways than what I knew about. Which is good to know now because Andrew's building a basement army and he's no doubt going to find all the nooks and crannies to make my life difficult as well. I, I do, um, in hindsight, they would have died when they fled from him um, just because it says they have to reform and then they flee directly away. So that pivot at their centre so that, you know, how you had them all in, in line. So that effectively pivot so they're all in a line and then run the three. Um, and it says if any, any part of it touches the edge mm. then then the whole unit is dead because uh because they were right next to oh. the edge already and they, the way that we did it they just kind of ran directly oh, okay. in line formation so well, you know, i guess any, i guess what i yeah so well that's that's, that's worth knowing although it's, uh given you also get to reform what i could have done was when i reformed before was to reform into the like this and shot the shit out of the guys that way um which might have been a smarter way of doing things too yeah uh, which would have made a whole different scenario, really. But um, but also, because of that rule, any part of the unit off the table, the whole unit goes off the table. Yeah, yes. That, you don't want to be too close to the tableage. To I think technically, close, technically, yeah. don't get too close. Just yeah. Because that might happen. That, that, that is a distinct risk, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, look, it was a weird game. Um, we're going to stop here because it's just very late. Uh, this is the problem with learning this game is there's so many not, not a weekend, so many things we have to look yeah. up. If we played six turns, we'd be here till three a.m. trying to yeah. learn all the rules again. I think Doug um, didn't use his um, level six spell tonight. I like level six spell. You level six. Oh, the, maybe. Yeah, but because uh, it, it it lets me move ten, but because chariots can march now by itself, it can move um, fourteen. And admittedly, the fly move would be valid, yeah. but I just didn't. Yeah, I tried to cast it once and failed. He needed a Templars to cast his his uh, with his, a level two. It's hard, yeah. yeah, so you really need but a, a I, higher level. That, I still can't complain. That's my man of the match still, though. Yeah. So he didn't need. He oh. was focused on on channeling up his big ass This guy, on this the guy right off a storm. He gets the gold medal, and your yeah. heavy chariot gets the silver medal. He was awesome. Yeah, he, that was pretty I, horrific. Given one more turn, I reckon he could have gotten the gold. But yeah, well, yeah, I mean, there there, there were a few situations where things worked out perfectly for you despite my best attempts to stop that from happening uh it's most annoying but uh you know it, it is a, it is a game of dice yeah, sometimes you think you're being clever and then you you roll the, well, something well, funny they're, and they're definitely there like i thought when get the three yeah, more hands in the corner of my chariot you'd think oh, that's probably not good for the chariot but because of my lucky roll it was just like well they just I, I rolled i rolled them, you know, and, i rolled yeah. crap you rolled exactly what you needed yeah. and exactly what you needed and it did the job and you've managed to avoid crashing your chariot as went barging through rocks in a river mm. um well anyway gentlemen what have we learned uh, i love the treatment i, I like how yeah. he's got yeah he gets those attacks attacks on top special attacks. yeah yeah, yeah and he's, he's a, got big stain power because you threw a lot at him yeah and he still had I, three wounds i got pretty unlucky with my uh also my bsb didn't hit at yeah. all but if you didn't charge that treatment he would be oh, sticking I didn't, around i a lot didn't longer. he charged me because he got a weird roll it was yeah weird I, I rolled like nine or yeah. ten to overrun yeah um, but the job is life i think he got the charge oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll, I'll remember that those um what else can shoot 32 inches now that's huge 30, 32, I don't know. Uh, I, was, I was shooting less than 30 every time yeah, I shot. So. Yeah, but either way, it's my... Um, They're still good. Um, the, the cockatrice will return to try to do something. Um, that cockatrice is lethal. Um, initiative 6, so initiative 9 on the charge is... Yeah, yeah. Seen for, for something that the beastmen have, initiative 9, that's like a greater demon of Selenish type <laughs> level. Um, now, I didn't... text does it have? Six, they're only strength four, but it's still, it's the quickest thing in the army in terms of initiative. Mm. Um, so it's worth fielding. One worth thing um, which which is very interesting is that, um, and correct uh, me if I'm wrong, comments is that the BSB no longer allows leadership test rerolls, mm. which is a massive change, makes fear, terror, all of that more 
um, interesting. The the um, the Jabba slide has definitely had a big boost over Eighth Edition. It's basically the same, but it's eighty points cheaper, and it has an arm save now. So yeah, monsters um, are uh, much more powerful in this game. Mm, and you know, uh, it's interesting how the behemoths can't stomp each other. Um, and it seems, and we could be wrong with this, but it seems that stomps happen at the monster initiative step now. Which yeah, is we can check that because that is one of the things that determined whether or not my branch wraith lived or died. Mm. Uh, and I think we're reading it right, and mm. I certainly use it that way with my treatment against your um, infantry. Yeah. But um, yeah, but we may have to double check that. There's a, no doubt a fact on this stuff somewhere. Mm. Yeah, getting your stomps in as part of your overall attack is yeah. awesome. Yeah. So now that this game's almost allowing um, the larger monsters into the game mm -hmm. because they've, they've dropped the point value overall, mm -hmm. so you're getting more monsters into the game. It's it's. I think they've rebounded because there was you know there was a couple of monsters which were always seen because they're really like powerful and mm -hmm. cheap, but then only like. 30 percent whereas now yeah, i think the most monsters more. you get a lot more monsters and in. the other thing just for the viewers is 1500 points you got some good monsters in this game yeah that's right yeah, we, we did have some good kids i didn't take a dragon because i didn't want to be a bastard yeah and and, and yeah, but in hindsight fully deck it out in well in hindsight it would have um yeah it would have been my entire character allotment or i could have gone a bit cheaper on it and still stuck a standard bearer in there but it would have gone without a mage yeah which didn't do anything anyway so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Dragons are great, though. They're, they're, but it's, when you're learning how to play the game, I've played a few more games than you. Throwing a dragon at you in a 1,500-point game would be a bit of an asshole thing to do. Yeah, also, it just means that there's less bits to play with. Mm -hmm. Like, for, also for myself, as someone this way, I get to see more, like, oh, some Eternal Guards, Marches and Dryads. I get, you know, yeah, it's yeah. more fun for But me a dragon well, also would have been the most powerful monster on oh, the table. Fun. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, I would have uh, sacrificed. What would I have lost? Um, oh, 20 bowmen? Oh. Yeah, quite a lot. Well, plus, <laughs> there wouldn't have a lot left. Well, plus with, yeah. Um, yeah, one thing I will say, with, with Beastmen in particular, um, compared with 8th, which is um, different, is that they have the Warband rule so that they're a bit more like Skaven in that they add their rank bonus to leadership, which is quite different. Yep. The generals have gone down a leadership pick, which I saw, and I was really like, oh, only leadership 8. But when you add that role to yeah. it, effectively you can roll at leadership 10. But that's where you put the fair, yeah. general in with the block. And, and he is effectively and leadership exactly what you yeah. there, yeah. Um. And on that note, uh, it's uh, coming up at midnight, I'm about to turn into a pumpkin. Um, thanks for watching, feel free to hit like, subscribe, comment, uh, any tactical suggestions are welcome. And on that note, it's time to call it a night. <laughs>